Proverbs chapter 24, verse number 10. If thou faint in the day of adversary, thy strength is small. Well, what about the strength? Verse 5, a wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. And if you go back and get the previous lesson that we had done about the, your house, you think you've got everything established. You think you've got your chambers filled by God. And then the first tribulation, the first ridic ridic being ridiculed, the first signs of trouble. And you fall down on your knees, and now oh, agony, pain, defeat. And according to the parable of the sower, this is one of the, this is one of the things that saved people fall away from God, and the, says the word becomes not fruitful. You know what's not being told to people who, who get saved today? Persecution cometh. Problems won't be solved. Listen, when you get saved, your eternal destination is changed. The cancer, the pain, the sorrow, the troubles, the tribulation may be more. You've taken on an enemy. And then through these trials and tribulations, you learn the where to pick yourself up in the Lord and move on. Work out that thing. If thou be, if thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn into death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, does not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, does he? Know it, and shall not he render to every man according to his works that he is God? And you can't say, I never knew. If you do say, I never knew, God knows what you know. And God knows what you don't know. So every once in a while when I preach on the street, and usually when I do it at the, at the farmer's market, I will tell them, listen, you are without excuse today, if you like it or not. You can't stand before God and say, I never knew. How can America go to hell? After many, many and listen, I, Little Town of Bethlehem is not a scriptural song. I'm going to tell you that right now. You look at the words and match it to the Bible, it does not match. Matter of fact, you're praising the little town of Bethlehem rather than you're praising Jesus. And I believe that's the a song that was too, was written by a Catholic. I believe. Check that one. But. How many years of We Three Kings and Little Little Town of Bethlehem and all the Christmas carols about Jesus Christ? How can America stand before God and say, I never knew? Don't you see why Satan's trying to get rid of those Christmas carols? Why he doesn't want them playing in the in the songs in the malls right here? Grandma getting ran over by Rudolph and Mama kissing Santa under the tree. Let's talk about death and, and, and adultery, right? Let's not talk about the light. So as we're going away from Christ in Christmas, and let's not think about Thanksgiving as a time of thanking God for blessing. Let's go away from the pigskin. Which, in the tribulation, the law is coming, and you know that the pig stand in the tribulation will be, that football will be, you have to make it out of plastic, because it will be forbidden under the law.
So as we move from our holidays and we worship Easter bunnies and a little guy with an arrow shooting people in the heart, as we leave God, don't you see what Satan's doing to this nation? He's leaving this nation an excuse. Like, but see, today you can't say, I've never heard of God. We still have, I know many people don't use them, but we still have cards, that greeting cards, that are in the racks or in a box that still have Christianity. When you go with your cards to buy the Christmas card, the birthday card, there are some titles or whatever you call it, tabs that have a cross. There are people still wearing Jesus on the cross necklaces. Now that's totally wrong, but how can you tell God there's no Jesus and you see all the crucifixes around? You know there are places that, that missionaries have gone and never in their life AD never have they ever heard about Jesus? Never have they ever seen a picture of Jesus. Never have they had a, a Christmas or, or, or a resurrection. And yet, when you send a missionary, missionary over there and you explain to God in the Bible, oh, how great they receive. And what's America? That Walmart has turned Black Friday into Brown Tuesday so you can get an extra day of shopping. And you born again Christians and me born again Christian, we still shop at that place? What's wrong with us? Why don't we get out there and say, hey, we're not going to do any more shopping, spend any money on Sundays. Never mind the government come with a blue law. Let's, for the sake of people to go to church. There was a time in this country that Sundays, everything was closed. What did they do with their time? You know, over in Asia, when Europe ran the world, England, an Indian guy came up to an English guy. He says, you know, he says, I give all your guys in this country Sunday off for your Christian God a guy that worships all kinds of animals and reincarnation and he says you know what's funny he says I give you English Sunday off and you do everything but serve your God on it where is England today and where is America going today that you have to fight your employer to get the day off You can never tell God you never knew. Because everyone's born with that light, Romans chapter 1. It's what you do with that light. And then when you got street preachers and gospel tracts and, and Christmas carols and churches, imagine living with, with under a mile from a Bible-believing church. And you're going to say you never knew? I don't think so. My son. That's funny because I've been saying, you know, he's been writing to read a bone, but what about God writing to us? This is a weird one. Eat thou honey. You know, honey is one of the characteristics that's spoken about the Word of God. Honey is a natural sweetener. And if God says eat honey, now, I don't know if I'm sure, but you can email me. I don't know how many emails I'm getting. Where do you find sugar in the Bible? Sugar causes diabetes. Sugar is a food additive that to fill the food with, with so you can't get real food into it. Because it is good. 
Solomon says honey is good for you. And the Holy Spirit says write that down in the Proverbs. That will be in the 66 books one day. You guys wonder, did Solomon ever think this Proverbs would be in the Bible? Son, eat honey. It's good. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste, gives you the sugar. Um... My notes here. Proverbs 24 13, 25 16, 25 27. All about honey. Revelation 10 8 to 10, 1 Samuel 14 27. With the honey. We're not just talking about honey, honey, which we are. So shall knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. Now, again, this knowledge is not earthly and sensual he's talking about the spiritual and heavenly knowledge when thou hast found it then there shall be a reward and thy expectation your hope your searching shall not be cut off if you desire the natural sweetness of the word of God in your life You'll get the sweetness of God. And you won't have to get yourself needles or anything like that and have to take pills. You know what's also is going on in America today? You haven't heard anything else about it because it's not making much money. Into when it does make money, then it will be put in the news again for a while. Honeybees are dying off. You know what honey comes from? When the bumblebees meets the flowers. You know what kind of flowers bumblebees visit? Cucumbers, tomatoes, orange blossoms, peach blossoms. That, are, that produce. See, you need a bumblebee to make fruit and vegetables. And if God's dying off the bumblebees, You think God will allow man to go around with a with a paintbrush and, and do the job that the bumblebees are supposed to do? If so, maybe the people that do it with the paintbrush, maybe they'll have to you know make it so that their fruit that they get will cost you a mark on your right hand or your forehead. Because if, and I'm just saying, the bumblebees die off, that fruit tree you have in your front yard, you're not going to get nothing out of it. The Bible says, you will not eat, least you have the mark. Something out there to throw. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. Ooh, guess God will get upset with you. For the just man falls seven times, and he rises again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Matthew 18, 21, 22, and Luke 17, 4. Yeah, he fell down seven times, but you know what? He gets up. It doesn't say how many times the wicked man fall. Listen, he may get up a hundred thousand times. That's only the long suffering of God. You know, as many times a wicked man gets up in his sin, it's just as worse as the, as the previous time. You know, a just man may fall and die and go home to be with the Lord. Well, if that wicked man in the long suffering God of God. Die, uh, uh, falls into trouble, gets up. I did it my way. Falls down again and gets up. Whew, wow, I'm glad. I'm glad the bank helped me with that one. And falls down and gets up. And listen, and God is sending witnesses. God is sending the gospel to this guy each and every time and being a witness. And he keeps turning. It's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. So he ends up at the at the great white throne judgment. And then guess what? You can't say I never knew.
you know rejoice not when thy enemy falleth the wicked man he may fall before you or wow you now it's not death it's a calamity it's a trouble it's a situation it's a it's a bad report from the doctor the wife is left the kids crash the car the stocks whatever and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth big events little events in his life colon it ain't the finish of the sentence at least the Lord see it now watch this and it did please him a saved man is happy that a wicked man is in trouble and that displeases God You know what the Bible says about someone who sows discord about, among the brethren? We're going to find out that God hates that one. He's displeased with this one. And watch what God will do. Boy, I was going to read, the candle of the wicked shall be put out. Shoot, that's a jump in a verse. Uh, wait. Oh. Uh, and he, God... Turn away the wrath from him. The enemy. You know, God may be placing wrath on that person because he's afflicting you, and you turn around and get happy, guys. Okay, fine. Release it off. Let him go back to work even harder. Yes, my boss, his boss has got this this medical business now. He's not going to be working for the company anymore. Yeah, all right. Oh, great. Monday morning, what are you doing here? Doctor said it was healed. I don't understand it. Good. Why are you answering my prayer? Why on? What you? What? Uh -huh. You know? You know, when you read that verse there, you ever wanted to read in Exodus? Each of those plagues of Pharaoh? And maybe the Jews were, ha ha ha, look what happened to Pharaoh. Ha ha ha, we're sitting over here in light now. That whole, whole nation over look, they're so dark over there, they ain't going nowhere. Ha ha ha. Oh, look at all their cows. Their cows are dead and ours are alive. And God's like, You're making me upset. Maybe. Scripture was scripture. And Pharaoh would rise again and cause more trouble and anguish. And I'm not going to get you straw this time. You go get your own straw. And you better produce the 50 bricks you produced yesterday. Right? Maybe. I don't know. Not like to me. Fret not thyself because of evil men. Don't worry. Neither be thou envious of the wicked. Some people wish they would be the bosses so they can do what the boss has been doing to them. That's wrong. Do your job and pray about it. What's wrong with that? what I do God will turn the burner up in your life where you need it and then you know put it on uh, simmer when give you a little rest you becoming the boss ain't the answer to the whole thing matter of fact it may be the worst because it may be a position that God doesn't want you in and you just may be worse than the other people and then give it up God and to be wicked something like that for there shall be no reward to the evil man. Uh-oh. 
Now watch this. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. Death. Rewards. And you run it back up to verse 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled and precious and uh, precious and pleasant riches. You get no rewards at the great white throne judgment when God casts you off into hell. You don't wear crowns in hell. You don't get out of boys in hell. You don't get a well done. You don't get faithful servant in hell at the great white throne judgment. You get condemnation, John chapter 3. For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the... Did I skip something? Did I skip verse 21? Let me give you a little warning. If you're part of the tea party, I'll give you a few minutes to turn the computer off, and you go get a Pepsi or something. Okay, the tea party people are gone. Verse 21. My son, fear thou the Lord. And the king. Uh -oh. That would be president for us. Which is acting like a king now. Has the power of a king. And meddle not with them that are giving to change. Ecclesiastes he's 8.4. I got another note here. Let me find it. And I'll explain the verse to you in a minute. Romans 13, Matthew 22, 2, Psalm 14, 1, Proverbs 18, 2, and I first think 1 Timothy 2 or 3, where Paul says to Timothy, pray for the king. Now, meddle not with them that are giving to change. We're going to do petitions. We're going to protect. We're going to change the government. Go out and vote. If you don't vote, you can't complain. Your vote counts. What does voting do? It changes. Well, what does the petitions do? You try to change. What if the Tea Party ran themselves in the time of, of Rome taxing the Jews in their nation. If the Tea Party had stopped the taxation, well then two things would have happened. Jesus would have never been born in Bethlehem, or Jesus being birthed would, would, would have happened in another city and defile scripture. You know, your Tea Party plans may be preventing the, the Antichrist coming, which means that the, you're prolonging the, the, the uh, rapture, the church. Maybe God has a specific way of running things. That even Pharaoh and he, he called the Egyptian uh, mag magicians to come over and to try to change things. And that only prolonged longer. You know, Moses and Aaron turned the water into blood through God. And the magicians added more by adding more blood and made it even worse. And Aaron threw down his rod and it became snake. And, and the magicians threw down their rod. And now Aaron has to carry a heavier rod around in his life. Because his rod ate the other rods. And he picked it up and it became a rod in his hand. Oh, wow, this thing is heavy. You're not going to change the government. You're not going to change taxes because you don't understand that Daniel says the Antichrist is going to be a riser of taxes. God puts the ruler of a nation in the place of the palace or White House. Not you. And if God thinks this nation is a dead nation, that's why he had dead people vote for the president. Oh, you think man did that? So man puts a person in authority and not God. And where that violates the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. 
God said, I put Pharaoh in the time of Moses, at the time of the Exodus, because I knew that would be the man that would not listen, and I would have to show my power where I had a Pharaoh comfort and take care of Joseph during a famine. The same Pharaoh that loved Joseph, is that was put there by God, is the same Pharaoh that hate the Jews and gave them rigor. God put both those Pharaohs in office. And you think just because you know you got Obamacare and stuff like that, oh, this is the end of the world. Taxation, oh, it's the end of the world. Why? You ain't going to take the money saved up and give it to the Lord. You're going to buy another bag of worms. Whatever you do. Stay out of God's business and you take care of your family. You get last night's uh video or audio, whichever you do, you take care of your own house. By the way, this is not your country. This country was given to the Native Americans when, it, when uh, Noah blesses his children. And it says, Japheth shall come and dwell in the tents of, of Shem. They didn't say he was going to take over the land. I'll tell you what this land is. This land is God's land. This world is, a, is the Lord's land. But right now, he's giving it to the authority of Satan. Why would you take a Christian man and put him in Satan's seat of authority? Okay, we're done with that. You guys can come back and listen to the Bible now. For their calamity. Who's calamity? Who? Who's it there? Those given the change. Oh, that's a col that's a colon at the end of twenty one. That's not the end of a sentence. Their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? You spend all your time trying to fight the government, and you're a saying Christian. You will stand at the judgment seat of Christ, ball headed. I think. Now that ballots were placed on paper in the machines and play paper today, I think paper burns. Why don't you guys, Christians, get all together and write yourself letters and bombard President Bo uh, Bush? Wow, President Barack Obama. I don't even know who the president is anymore. Why don't you bombard him with letters on how to get saved? Can you imagine, instead of calling him everything under the sun, can you imagine if you were to bombard President Obama, every saved man, every saved woman, every saved child would, would buy a, a stamp and get the Postal Service to work again. Can you imagine if every saved person were to send a letter to the president and his wife Michelle about how to be saved and pray... Before you write that letter, pray while you're writing that letter, pray while that letter is being sent by the Postal Service, and pray when it gets into his hands, and pray, 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 pray! Then you might be given to change. I have not heard or read any political president official statement that I am a born-again Christian. Oh, yeah, I read Bush's book and with uh, 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 Billy Graham and all that. Yeah, that, yeah. then I, I saw his life. How his wife is a teacher for the NEA. I know about the NEA. I know how they feel about Jesus. Okay? You say not to vote? No, I say read your Bible. I say go out there and try to try to win souls. Tell people about Jesus Christ who don't know about Jesus Christ. Tell Christians how to live right. I don't see voting in the Bible. For a ruler of a nation. And the most wickedest ruler 
that is under the apostles, which is the foundation upon Jesus Christ, say, pray for Nero. Go study Nero. He makes President Obama a little tiny little kitten who just had his eyes open. He's cuddling you pet compared to Nero. And Paul and Peter, we make fun of Peter, both tell you, told the Christians then, pray for that guy. How about that change? How about a change for once to have the President of the United States come up and tell, hey, listen, I'm a born-again Christian now. Here's my Bible. This is how I got saved. And let me tell you before, you know, get it out there quick before they turn off the, the, the cameras. Because you know as soon as the President would stand up for Jesus Christ, the cameras would go off and then out comes the swords. I wonder if President Obama were to step out and say, listen, I'm a born-again Christian. My sins are under the blood. And I know, and here's the verses, and I am going to tell you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. I wonder if Christians today would accept that. And receive the sins that would be put under the blood of Jesus if they would even accept that. That'd be interesting. I would love to see God say President Obama just to despite the Christians that are against him and waiting for the resurrection of Ronald Reagan. I just I just lost people. I know that. They ain't never gonna listen to me again. Well that's the truth. Though these things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Oh. Just because who they are, what they are, doesn't matter. If they are guilty, they are guilty. If they are a sinner, mama, don't tell them they're saved. Mister, if grandma was not saved, she's not going to be in heaven with a coon dog. There are people going at the great white throne judgment are going to stand up to Jesus and say, didn't we didn't we walk with you? Didn't we talk with you? And the, you know, and Jesus is gonna say, "I never knew you." Yeah, but we heard you speak. I was in church. I was in that church since infancy. I was baptized as an infant in that church. I never knew you. And because who they are or what they are has no difference in judgment. If it is, it's a sin. He that saith unto the wicked, thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, not in America. You put them on a poster or a trading card and lift them up. You put them on and give them a TV show. Him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. Isaiah 5.20. They don't. It's reverse. We shut up the Christians and let the sinners speak. But to them that rebuke him, verse 24, shall be delight. And good blessing shall come upon them. I mean, you would think it would be so. The rebuker is blessed. When I go out there and tell people because of their sins, they're going to go to hell unless they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God, God blesses me. Every man shall kiss his lips. Look at my 
that giveth a right answer, a truth teller. First Peter three fifteen. Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thy house. Priorities. Food, crops. Haggai 4, 1 through 8. The clearing of the land, Matthew 13, 38. You got to break the ground before you build. Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause, Exodus twenty sixteen, and deceive not with thy lips. Don't you lie. That's what that verse is saying. You know, many people came to be a false witness to Jesus. Say not, I will do so to him as he has done to me, the golden rule. I will render to the man according to his work. The Bible says don't even say it. Don't even say it, Romans 12, 17. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay, saith the Lord. My grandma quote that verse all the time. It's her. Fool. Oh, it's more people. And I'm going to stop there because I love verses 30 to 34. And, I mean, 30 to 34 before we get there reminds me of many places in New England where I came from. And Tracy would say, and I know the kids remember, you walk by anywhere, especially in Ledger, there'd be these stone walls. And you look, and it was like, why? Where's the house? Where's the cows? Where? I, it's just a preview. 30 and 34 always. This brings me to those times off Route 2 and all that. And we'll get into that. We'll stop right there.